page 144, the Erie Canal. It's been in a few method books. This is a nice arrangement. This is, I think, the most advanced arrangement I've seen yet of this in, in the method books. Well, let's see what we got here. We got two pages, treble and bass clef, 4-4 four, four time, one sharp in the key signature, either G major or E minor. Well, if you at the beginning, it starts out in E minor. If you look at measure 13, we're here. We went into to G major, but if you look at the end of the third line, you see the double bars, we're going into a new section. Well, a lot of times you change keys. We didn't change key signatures because both have an F sharp in them, but still, it's, it's a different key. Then when you get to measure 21, you see the double bars. Now we're going into another section and we're going back into E minor now. Okay, so it's in sections too. Just I don't see anything tricky about this. You got eighth notes and quarter notes, and we we do all that. There's a few triplets here and there. Hopefully you can handle those. Got plenty of accidentals to deal with. Let's take it one hand at a time, make sure we have the notes and I'm fingering out. The beginning is just one chord, so then a four chord, a five seven chord. Okay, and measure five. This is the the song starts with the pickup to measure five. That's why the double bars at the end of the first line, well, that first line is an introduction, and an introduction is another section. Not all pieces have the double bars between the sections. A lot of times you'll have an introduction to a piece without the double bars. It doesn't matter. It's still an introduction, and it's still a different section. Now, in the pickup to measure five here, I suggest if you can use second finger on the D sharp. This way your thumb is free to use the E on the measure five. I'd like to connect them here. And I can slide off, but that's tricky. So here and then here. And I still use two five here, here. I mean, you can use thumb if you want to, but I prefer two five here. Last line here. You got these double, that's all right. And then a dotted rhythm with a short note coming first. One and two and three. You can, one and two is fine if you can do it. And measure 16, there are two dotted rhythms here. First one, the short note comes first. And the second one, short note comes last. So it's one and two and three and four and one. It doesn't matter, you didn't handle it. Just make sure the D sharp, F sharp come on beat three. I want to play them in front of, I want to play them, I want to play them quicker, and that's not what's written. Let's go down to measure 22. You're here, one and two and three and four and one and I'm, not, I'm going to stay out here, so rather than using a thumb on the F sharp, this is measure 24. Here, I'm going to reach down and use thumb again. I'm staying out here. Here. And then. And I measure 25 this. I'm just transferring weight from finger to finger. I'm using the weight to push it down. I'm rotating the hand slightly. It's a small motion. I exaggerate it so you can see it better, but it's really a... I'm not using the fingers, holding the hand still and using the fingers. No. Uh -uh. So, then the major 27 here. Third finger. Okay. Left hand at the beginning is one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a. Two. That's fine. Then measure five is one, two. Try and get these notes all down at the same time if you can. A lot of these are primary chords. You should know those. So over to page 145, it's measure 20, is it? Where the fermatas are. It's a here, it's five, seven, one, and here. D natural, and then you're up here. You, you can do a three on the first one, and then five if you want, because you're here, third finger's there. Or if you want to lift up and come up. Broken chords, 
it's a one chord. Remember we're in G major here? Are we in G major? I guess we're not. I don't know where we're at. We're somewhere. Put the hands together. Then remember, play the rest here. The hands come up. You go through and put the hands together. Just go as slow as you got to go and then go back through and work on those spots where you're hesitating, you're not sure, and work out the hesitation so it flows smoothly. As far as articulation goes, you're pretty much connecting it. You can lift up between the phrases in the right hand if you'd like and if you want to know where the phrases are here because they have words, follow the clauses in the words. So if you get to a comma, or a period, or an exclamation, or something like that, it's usually the end of a, a phrase. So here, that's one phrase, lift up, lift up, it's a new phrase. Major 20, lift up, that, that O oh, is a new phrase, and then connect it, lift up, O, oh, okay, so you can put in the phrasing, they give you accents over on, like on major 23, if you want to put them in, okay, just give a little extra oomph on the accents. Not much, just a little extra. Dynamics? Well, it, for the introduction, it's both hands. There's no melody. Softly. Now, moderately loud, that's the melody. The left hand stays soft. Then loud is measure seven. The left hand is still soft. It's like a statement reply, statement reply, the statement reply, and the reply is louder than the statement, and that's what they're doing here. In measure 13, moderately loud. for as long as it feels right and then go on and major 19 they say slower don't know how much slower just slower Fermata hang on to that a little silence new phrase and now you're loud in the right hand and moderately soft in the left and you're back up to regular speed here off tempo means resume the speed you were going before you slowed down or changed it, I should say, before you change the speed. Well, at measure 19, we changed the speed to slower. Now we're back to regular speed here. And you're loud. And the, and the right hand, the left hand's moderately soft here. As far as the speed of this, I tend to play it too fast. You're you're working hard on an Erie Canal thingy. You can read the words here, and you're just strolling along. If you're going to sing it, how fast would you sing it? Got a mule and her fifteen miles on. That's about how I think it should go. It just okay. Then of course they've added pedal, and that's fine because we sort of need pedal for a couple of reasons. One is to connect these notes. I can't connect them without the pedal. I need the pedal help there. And also for contrast, because there's a contrast between the beginning and connecting them all. That's contrast. One is connected and one isn't. 
and that's important in music. So yeah. Also, we use pedal on the fermata notes because they're held out. We want to color them. And on major 20, same thing. And now I'm on silence between the last two notes. So I'm going to lift the pedal up with the hands and then put it down. And now I'm going to lift the pedal up after I play the notes in the next major because I want to connect them. I don't want silence there. No, it's all low. I'm going to connect all that together. And that's about all the pedal. Don't pedal any, anything else, though. Bottom of page 145, when you get to the first inning and you repeat, there is no reverse repeat sign anywhere. So you go back to the beginning. So that in the left hand there at the end, you're here. Make sure that's a thumb because that way you're in position to go back to here. And in my opinion, you can be soft there. The last note in the first inning can be soft because you're leading into back to there. So you can be soft there. Now this is the last piece in the book. Congratulations if you've actually made it through the book and done everything. If you don't have a teacher, I encourage you to go back through and do everything again. Go through the book again. Go through the lessons again. Check everything out again. Do all the sight reading again. You'll find that you can play things more easily and the fast things a little faster than you did. So yeah, by all means. I don't know that there's a book three to this series, so if you're looking for something more to do, it's really kind of up to you. Once you get to this level, you just find stuff you enjoy playing and go for it. If you're looking for a method book or more lessons from me on it, which would need to be a method book or something like that, you can try the repertoire books. I've covered a few of them. and You simply go through and start around level two or three and go up from there. And if you're looking for a method book to carry on, then I would recommend probably the John Thompson series. It can be the regular or the adult. It doesn't matter. I can't really tell a difference between them. And start it around level two. It'll be a little lower than where you're at, but it's, it'll end more difficult than this. And then you can go through the John Thompson series, and that'll take you up a little further. But other than that, I don't have a lot of suggestions on where you go from here. It's up to you. I like to play this with you slowly. Let's double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. We're going to do the repeat and the whole bit. I'm going to pedal it like they're showing. I don't really agree with their pedaling. My 
You can adjust it as you see fit, but I'm not going to change it right now. It's, I'll give us four counts. Let's try it together slowly. One, two, ready, go. Rest. <laughs>